in this demo, I have this spring. And on this spring, I am going to add a mass. So this spring is normally at rest right here. When I add the mass to it, it is going to change where the spring is at rest to this position. So initially, uh, it's going to look like this before we attach anything. And then we're going to stretch it out and the mass is going to be down there. And we can measure various distances here. So this distance right now, when it's stretched out, is 52 and a half centimeters. And this distance before we stretch it out is 27 centimeters. And the mass of the pendulum bob is 228.5 grams. And conveniently, I lost most of those numbers. We'll see how much I got. Mass is equal to 0 0.2285 kilograms. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, the initial length was 0 0.27 meters. Um, and it was stretched out until it was a distance of 0 0.525 meters, or 52.5 centimeters. Did I actually remember all those? Awesome. And our goal here is to figure out the spring constant of the spring. Thoughts on how to figure out the spring constant of the spring? Laura? Would you have to take that 0.525 into minus 27 or 0.27? To figure out <coughs> x. x. Notice x is the displacement from equilibrium position. So that is going to be the 0.525 minus the 0.27, both in meters. And we get what for x? 0 0.255 meters. OK, good. What else? How are we going to figure out K, the spring constant? Mary? We should start with a free body diagram. Clearly, we're dealing with a force <coughs> acting on this. The, the mass, the force is acting on the mass here. So we need a free body diagram. Please give me the forces in our free body diagram. Lily. Um, the Force of gravity going down. There's a force applied going down. What is applying the force down? The mass that that is the force of gravity. Nope. Emma, help out. Um, does the force of the spring go up? How do we know the force of the spring is up, David? Because um, the equilibrium is at 0.27 meters stretched out. Uh, yes, but that's not quite enough of a description for me, please. Uh, Connor? Um, the, the displacement is <coughs> down. The force um, of the spring is always going back to the equilibrium. Opposite. The force of the spring is opposite the displacement, it's always toward the equilibrium position. Therefore, the displacement of the mass was down, the force of the spring is therefore up. We can now sum the forces. Christina, please sum the forces for me. In the y direction. Fs. Fs stands for? Force of spring minus gravity. Which is equal to? Good. What is the acceleration of the y direction when the object, the mass, was hanging right there? What was it, Mrs. Song? Zero. Zero. Notice it was not moving up or down. 
Therefore, the force of the spring minus the force of gravity is equal to zero. When we add the force of gravity to both sides, we get that the force of the spring is equal to the force of gravity. Leah, from here. What's G? I don't like the term gravity because we often confuse the force of gravity with little g, which is true. What is it due to gravity, Daniela? The acceleration due to gravity. What about on the left hand side, Leah? Okay, so what we're trying to find. Now, please pay attention to this particular moment because this is something people confuse. Now, coming back to the thing I pointed about, out about this negative in the force of a spring equation, which is equal to negative kx. That told us the direction of the force of the spring is opposite the displacement. Now. We drew our free body diagram. When we drew our free body diagram and summed the forces and said that the force of the spring was positive, we used the direction of the force of the spring. So we need to use the magnitude of the equation. So we do not use the negative because we have essentially already used the negative in our free body diagram and when we sum the forces. Because all that negative does is illustrate the direction. So once, again, once you have figured out the direction and used that direction, you're only going to use the magnitude of the equation. So we get k is equal to mg divided by x. In that same vein, x, the displacement from equilibrium position, is actually down, right? But we don't want to plug in anything, any more things having to do with direction because we've already figured out the direction. So we just use the magnitude of Mass. So k is equal to the mass, 0 0.2285 multiplied by g, 9.8, divided by x, which was 0 0.255 meters. k is equal to 8.78156.82. That's plenty. Uh, with sig figs, 8.88.8 what, Andrew? Is that Newton's per meter? Newton's per meter. 